Hi all, Tuesday and I'm back with you once again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, this is a continuation of the uh, series I'm putting together covering the random source surge modules. And today's video I want to take a look at the VCF, uh, uh, variable Q VCF, sorry. And this is probably one of, one of the more popular filters in the surge range. And it can do you know basic general purpose filtering and it's got also a few neat tricks up its sleeve thanks to Surge's patch programmability concept that I was discussing in the last video um, so I want to take a bit of a look at that and show you what this filter is capable of and why I think it's a really awesome filter so I'm gonna go and uh, have a bit of an overview of the panel firstly and then I'll do some sound and audio uh, demos and show you some neat tricks that this thing can do and basically you can see down the left hand side of the panel we have our inputs uh, we have at the top of uh, AGC in or audio gain compensated input so that uh, allows us to basically it attenuates a really hot signal if it's put in and we have a gain control at the bottom you can see here which doesn't actually affect this input so underneath that we have the main audio input and you can see I have a connection made there this, uh, this green one and this gain parameter is uh, a control for the level of this input so we can attenuate the signal that's been put in underneath we have a trigger input so that's somewhat an unusual uh, input for a filter and I'll come back and show you why this is cool in a moment under this we have a volt per octave input for the uh, cutoff frequency and that allows it to track the one volt per octave protocol which is quite useful when you uh, well I'll come back and show you why that's useful also in a moment and underneath we have a toggle switch which allows this filter to operate in a couple of different modes and I'll again I'll come back to that so we have four pots down sort of the bottom right hand corner you can see along the bottom we have the gain control for the input as I was just uh, talking about and then besides that on the bottom right we have the frequency the cutoff frequency control and uh, the two pots above that the black one here in the center is the resonance control and there's a jack just above that which is a voltage control input for the resonance so you can control the resonance for a voltage and then on the right hand side is a a scalable voltage control input for the cutoff frequency so you can see the input and then the attenuverter or attenuating inverter so you can scale or invert the voltage that you want to control the cutoff with uh, in the top right hand section in this box you can see these are the outputs so this filter can uh, simultaneously work as a high pass, low pass, band pass and a notch filter as you can see and that you know that covers all your typical needs of a filter you know in most most cases uh, so I guess I'll show you some demos you know for the audio input so I have a sawtooth running to the main audio input coming from the NTO And I have the filter wide open with a connection coming from the low pass output. So this is running as a low pass filter at this stage. I have the gain at max, so I'll just dial that slightly back, maybe to about three quarters. And the resonance is all the way down, so this is not going to be too resonant. So I'll just sweep back through the uh, frequency range. You can hear, I'll just close this. So you can see on the spectrum inside of Bitwig here, uh, visualization just uh, to demonstrate what the filter is going to do to the audio. 
So I'm just going to sweep back down throughout the frequency range and you can see the high frequency is now being attenuated as we move that cutoff frequency down. All the way we'll not quite close it but get the idea. So if I increase the resonance you can start hearing the harmonics being pinched out as we sweep the range. If we turn that resonance right up, it gets pretty wild. Like it's, it's a pretty wild kind of filter. You can see those harmonic peaks in the spectrum. So if I take this input back to the automatic gain compensated input, you can see now that we've got audio without even having the gain level up. And low levels of resonance it typically behaves the same as the normal input. But if we increase the resonance, it does its compensating, like it compresses the waveform of the audio coming in. So you can run really quite high levels of resonance without fear of overloading your uh, system. So that's kind of useful if you're going to use a really hot input as well. Say for instance the hot output of the SSG. So let's take a look at some of these other outputs. Look at the high pass. So this is the high pass at quite high resonance. We'll sweep back down. We can hear the low frequencies coming back in. Yeah, so you can hear it's at high levels of resonance it gets quite grungy and it's really characterful which is a thing I like about the filter it's, you know, it's got its own quality to it which is can be quite wild and uh, it has a really like I said it's kind of grungy sound but it's well, I think it's quite a nice sound uh, we'll have a look at the bandpass output so once again you can hear the lows and if we sweep up across the mid-range we'll hear the high frequencies come back in and the lows being attenuated. And I'll show you the notch just lastly. This typically works, it was more effective at low levels of resonance. You just see a bit of a dip in the spectrum as we cross up and down the frequency range. Like so. So this is useful for getting pseudo phasey type of sounds and qualities or if you're just looking to dip a particular narrow band in the spectrum. Okay, so, like I was saying before, we have this trigger input, which, uh, it's a pretty useful input for typically doing what's, I guess, commonly known as uh, pinging filters, where you would send a pulse to an input, and depending on the level of the resonance and the cutoff frequency, you can get the filter to behave in a percussive like a really natural kind of percussive way so I've just I've got a pulse coming out of a slope generator here we'll put that to the trigger in give it a bit of gain and actually I'll just remove that audio input so without any resonance all you'll hear is the pulse it's just a typical click and if we give it a bit of a bit of resonance 
I can start here and tone come out. So the resonance will control the decay of the sound, like depending on the frequency. And here as we go up, the decay tapers off. So to get a longer decay at high frequencies, you will need to increase the resonance, but only works to a certain point. And turn that compressor up so you can hear it a little bit better. And at lower frequencies, you can really taper that resonance off, like so. So if you combine that, <coughs> say with a, another audio signal to the uh, FM input. interesting percussive FM sounds out of it. Okay, so we'll just take that out. Remove that. So <clears throat> I guess we'll come back to this switch at the bottom here before like I was saying it can operate in two different modes and this is a addition that random source have once again implemented with this model um, basically it combines what was originally two separate surge filters there was the original variable QVCF and then there was another filter that was known as the extended range VCF or VCFQ or uh, I can't quite remember but yeah, it basically combines those two filters now into one uh, model, which is really neat. And uh, basically the difference between the high and low mode is the high high mode works in the audio range, like most typical filters. Uh, and if we put it into the low range, it now operates in the sub audio range. So you can use it to process control voltages, uh, or you can get it to do a, qu uh, a couple of other neat tricks, which I'll demonstrate. Uh, so, what I will do is show this oscillator. When you start using some of these patch programmable techniques, you can get different behaviors and get basically get the module to behave. Uh, and serve different purposes to just typical filtering. So, for instance, we take this bandpass output, feed it back to the audio input. Whee! Sorry, guys, that was a bit brutal. Yeah, we now have an oscillator, so this will behave like a VCO now. And you can get if we open up the oscilloscope, basically you can see that well, oscillate is a, a dirty kind of sine wave. You can use the gain and the resonance to somewhat shape shape the oscillation to some extent. So this is where this volt per octave input actually becomes useful. So now you can get it to track at one volt per octave. So So you get the 
do there. Okay. But if we want to put this now into back into low mode, with this connection mode, it's going to oscillate in the sub audio range, so it's going to become more of an LFO. So let's, uh, I just don't mind my housemates waffling. I'll just disable this mic for a sec and we can have a look at the scope. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so you can see it functioning as an os os low frequency oscillator. Uh, but what's also cool about it is the four different outputs act as phase shifted uh, outputs. So they're all shifted 90 degrees from each other, which effectively can allow this to function as a quadrature, or gives a quadrature function. So it can function as a quadrature LFO uh, which is pretty neat. So what you can also do is patch the trigger back in in low mode and you can get these strange kind of envelope shapes. So you can behave as you can see on the scope now you can see these quick kind of envelopes going on which can be useful. Uh, You can also filter or use it to filter LFOs, for instance, if we take that connection back out. And I'm just running a, a bit of a triangle slope from one of the uh, slope generators I have, which I'll cover in another video if you're not sure about those. But you can see. Well, the scope's not giving us much of a visualisation. Well, if we turn the gain up, we can now see that oscillation. And if we, just, we can smooth it out, basically slow it down with the uh, cutoff. So as you can tell, there's some pretty neat functionality baked into it that's not obviously apparent just from looking at the module. But again, the, the concept of patch programmability uh, really opens up what you can get out of this module. And uh, I guess I'll just finish with another pretty interesting demonstration. So we'll take that sawtooth again. We'll go to the gain compensated input Let's turn it up. We'll go back into high mode. So you can hear that filtered sawtooth. The resonance is quite high. And we'll just bump that scope value up. So, so guys, so you can get a bit of a visual. Now we'll take the trigger back we had before to the trigger input and combine them so you can get audio filtering and pinging simultaneously at that's
So it's cool when you start bumping those triggers up into the audio ro range as well. into the oscillator. Mm -hmm. We'll make one last connection to the FM input again. Which gets pretty wild. Lots of nice formative kind of sound. Awesome filter, lots of fucking cool tricks up its sleeve, and I suggest you go and explore it if you've got it. Um, otherwise, I hope this has been helpful and you know, been a useful demonstration of what this filter is capable of and why it's a cool filter. So, I'm going to wrap this up. If you've got comments, questions, and queries, and criticisms, any of that stuff, feel free to drop us a line and. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next video soon. Thanks for watching and take care.